Hello everyone and welcome back to our next episode in the series when we are building the big end-to-end -end Python deep learning project. In this project we are assisting the local farmer Jamil in determining the health of his tomatoes through the image analysis. In previous episodes you can catch on my YouTube channel, go watch it here. We covered the purpose of this project, we set up the environment and we did the initial data preprocessing. Today we are moving forward to the building of our first neural network. But before that we will do some data augmentation to artificially create more data for our model. And then we will create our first neural network. Don't worry if it's too complicated, I will go step by step and explain you everything so you don't only copy the code but you understand what you are doing and you will use these skills and abilities in your future amazing AI projects. So let's get started with the code. Together we can make history. There will be a link to the whole code in the bio. So if you haven't watched the last episodes, go watch it and then come back to this episode. And to even start coding, we need to find where we stored the last episode. Open your file folder and localize your directory. I have my directory here, tomato AI project, I open it. Then there is another directory, training, I will open it also. I need to copy the path of the project by clicking here and pressing Ctrl plus C. Opening my favorite command line and writing here CD that stands for change directory. Paste the URL, press enter. And right here, Jupyter, Jupyter node, present. This will open the Jupyter notebook file from the last episode. This one. This is the data preprocessing. We imported all the libraries in the last episode, so don't worry about it now. And here we will continue with our Firstly, we will do data augmentation and, and then we will create our first neural network. So, to make a title, write hashtag data augmentation. Press enter. Shift enter will run the cell. Here there is a code. I have mentioned in the previous episode that this Keras library is used for creating a neural network. With this Keras library, we will stack the layers of neural network one on another one and then we will create the big neural network from these layers. There is a data augmentation but I need to resize and rescale all images to the same size and scale. I will do this also with Keras neural network layers, so bfkeras.sequential, this is the pre-built function to connect the layers together like this type of brackets here I will define the layers layers the first one will be resizing resizing to the image size we defined this constant before image size and image size but here the image size was tuple of two numbers. We need the image size to be only one number. So I will define here another constant. One image size will be equal to 256. And that will be here. One image size and also one image size. The second layer will be rescaling. rescaling because if you have smaller numbers in your input of your neural network the neural network will train much faster and it won't have like that many ups and downs in the training process. Uh, every pixel in the image is uh, from 0 to 255 and I will scale it to from 0 to 1. I will rescale it by dividing every pixel with the number 
255. As the result of this will be that every pixel will have the value from 0 to 1. Now I can run this code. And there is a mistake here. I think I need to store this to some variable. Precise and rescale equal to this. Or run this. I will run everything. Okay, now maybe let's just wait for a few moments yeah everything is fine the next layers of this neural network will be related to data augmentation it will be also created with the pf keras sequential and with the same syntax why are we even creating new data when we have already the training data set, the validation data set is, and so on? Because you, you can simply create more data and make your model more robust and more accurate. For example, you can simply create new data with only zooming or rotating your training data and you will have more images and this easy way to make your neural network better and that's what we want the third layer will be layers that random clip uh, here the parameter will be horizontal and vertical comma the next layer will be for example random rotation 0.2 just rotate a little bit and you have new data then a random zoom also just a little bit okay the next one is random translation there is two parameter needed height factor will be 0.2 and the width factor will be also 0.2 we can also only change the contrast of the initial images just writing layers random contrast 0.2 that's all it and similarly to this you can change the brightness of the image. random brightness also just a little bit and then i think that's enough as the next code will be the final neural network but I won't write the code on my own. Again, I will just copy it from my GitHub repository. I recommend you to do the same or you can write it yourself. I will rather explain you why it's done like that. So I will go to my GitHub repository, copy this whole cell and paste it to the current project. Like this. You can notice that there is no data augmentation layer here but don't worry we will use this data augmentation when we will training the model not now there is only the resize and rescale to have every image the same impact firstly what are these constants the channels is three channels of, of one pixel every pixel have three the three default colors red green and blue and every pixel have one number for all of these channels the input size is the required size of uh, our neural network we need to specify the batch size it's how many images at once the neural network will take the image size and the number of channels here n classes is 10 because in our images we have 10 classes 10 different classes of our tomato here model that sequential will create the model from the layers the first we will use the resize and rescale layer here then our neural network containing two parts this one and the second one is this but before i explain you what are these parts you need to know that how the we as the human recognize images for example look at this image of a dog we do not lo look at the dog and say it is dog 
our brain is recognizing the small features of the dog for example the eyes the tail the legs and it will connect the these small features and then it will say it is a dog so this first part of the convolution neural network is recognizing these features and connecting these features to bigger features and then these features will be input for our second part of the neural network which classify is it really the picture of a dog or not but how is this convolution neural network recognizing the the features of the image or something else it using the kernel like this for example you can imagine that the kernel is the square three times three and it has the numbers one and minus one you will put this square into the image and count what's the result you will multiply all these numbers with the numbers in the picture like this and then you will get the result of the feature the feature number and these features numbers will serve in the future as the inputs to our classification layer and depending on these inputs the neural network will decide if it's the right picture or it is not the right picture or which of these three not three ten classes is the correct one there are two more concepts that i have to explain what is this max pooling layers and what are these functions if you imagine a neuron in the neural network every neuron will take the inputs as a linear combination of the weights and the inputs plus some bias plus some number and then with the linear combination we cannot solve the complex problems we need another function this first one is called base function but we need to another function which is called the activation function which is here the real it will add the non-linearity to our model to solve more complex problems for example this rel looks like this what the rel does the rel will take the all positive numbers as they are and all the negative numbers will be zero this is enough for us to solve the more complex problems and in the last layer there is activation function which is soft max in the last layer there will be 10 neurons and the soft max will be, take the the one with the highest probability and with the highest probability will be the result and the last thing i need to explain you this max pooling in general pooling layer the pooling layer will take the input of some size and for example this 2 2 will take the square of 2 times 2 pixels and it will take the max value to reduce the size of our inputs and also to reduce the noise of the random numbers that's all for this neural network i hope i give you the simple explanation but you with this simple explanation you got all of these concepts now i will run this cell everything is fine and then i will print out the summary of our neural network by writing model dot summary and running the code in the summary of our neural network you can see that it's very complex it has total of 184,000 parameters we have to train to recognize these images so in the next episode it will be a lot of work to do to train this neural network but i have a belief in you that we can make it together in this episode i will stop here because the next one will be a little bit difficult we not we don't need to rush into something i hope you understand everything if not just play it once again so you will be ready for the next episode quick recap what we done we created some layers 
like data augmentation, rescaling, then we connect all these layers to our neural network. We print out the summary of our neural network. That's all for this episode. If you enjoyed this episode, hit subscribe, smash the like button, write something nice to your fellow programmers in the comment section, share this episode with your friends and have amazing rest of your day. Peace.